Like in many FE1 exams, your job isn't always to have the answer, it is to ask the question. So we'll be going through the commission and asking, what's it made up of? What sort of laws does it pass? And is it un un unanimous or is it by qualified majority voting? We'll be doing the same with the Parliament and we'll be seeing that the Parliament essentially has eight roles. The Parliament is a popular question because it has evolved. It is the only directly elected body, as we know. The others are indirectly elected or simply appointed. I mean, you all remember the big furore about whether or not Ireland would have a commissioner. When you look at the laws surrounding the appointment of a commissioner, one of the first things a commissioner has to do is take a note that they won't be partisan towards their member state. Bird versus Jones is also a useful little case to refer to as they emphasise the point that there is no uh, limit in the sense that there's no minimum time for the offence to have been created. Even a momentary restriction of personal liberty or taking or detaining of someone can be sufficient. Remember last week we mentioned the maxim that equity will not permit a statute to be used as an instrument of fraud. And we also noted that from the perspective of equitable innovation, the courts of equity have attempted at all times to innovate where justice and good conscience demanded. A huge impact prior to the 2009 Act, we had legal life estates also, but that is no longer the case since the 1st of December 2009 when the Act came into place. So if you were discussing the modernisation or the reform of um, the life estate, it would be essential to mention that, but also if you were doing a 10 mark question to show that you understand that, that it is now a trust situation and an equitable estate only. That's what happened in Hedley Byrne Heller. Bear in mind that when Hedley Byrne went to Heller at the bank and said, give me a credit reference or a statement about these guys, easy power, Heller didn't say, we'll charge you for that. They didn't say, no, 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 maybe if you pay us. They handed one over. And so there was no contractual relationship whereby Hedley Byrne had agreed to pay Heller for this report or that they owed him a contractual duty. That's why they were, they were confined to this tort law duty of care. How might it be asked? Constitutional interpretation is how the words of the Constitution are interpreted by the courts. Why is this important? The Constitution is, as we said last week, extremely powerful and extremely vague. It's a small document and yet it can only be changed by referendum, which means that it supersedes legislation, it supersedes judge-made law. If I'm challenging a piece of legislation or if I'm challenging the behaviour of the executive, say the behaviour of a policeman, I am doing so often with reference to the Constitution, which means what? It means it matters what judges think the words mean.